Today, Mark and I are at the Shoreline Historical Museum in Shoreline, Washington, downtown Shoreline, Washington. This is an old school that was built in 1912, and it's the home of the Shoreline Historical Museum, Shoreline, Washington. Cool, informed people. And we're going to pick up where we left off in our previous demo on symbolizing uh, predicate logic sentences, also called quantificational logic sentences. Uh, so I think we left off with an I sentence, but we aren't sure, so we're going to continue there. So we'll say some cats are pets. How would you symbolize that, Mark? In categorical language? In uh, quantification quantificational language? logic okay. or predicate logic. Okay. Uh, well, it's a sum statement, so I know it's going to be an existential or particular statement. Mm -hmm. So let's start off with an existential quantifier. Yeah. And uh, that would be in parentheses, a backward looking E, and I'll pick a X. Okay. So an existential quantifier. Mm -hmm. And usually particular statements will have a dot. Not always, but oftentimes. Ampersand. So there, there's something out there, ampersand. There's something out there such that it's a cat and it's a pet. So I'd be saying CX, ampersand, PX. So, so so CX ampersand PX. Yeah. Okay. okay. And that will do it. Okay. For that one. And so let's read this in, okay. in kind of precise formal terms. This part can be thought of as the subject of the sentence. So this part tells you what the sentence is about. It's about one or more X. They're unnamed. They're undescribed. It's just about one or more X's. And then this can be thought of as the predicate part of the sentence. So the subject part tells us what the sentence is about. The predicate part says something about the subject part. So we read this as telling us that this sentence is about one or more X's. And then this part says of each of those X's, however many there are, of each one, it's a cat and it's a pet. And so this says there's one or more X's such that X is a cat and X is a pet. Okay? And uh, this is all. Mm -hmm. Word sums telling me that. So I'd yeah. start off. The main connector is going to be an existential quantifier again. Okay. This is saying there's something out there, something exists, mm -hmm. such that it's a cat and it's not a pet. Mm -hmm. So I'd have CX ampersand, not PX, tilde PX. And we want to have both those. X is bound by that quantifier, that's why you have the parentheses. Right, so the quantifier binds every variable within its scope, and the scope of the quantifier is going to be the same as if the quantifier were a tilde, isn't it? Yeah. So this quantifier scope will be everything all the way to the end of this parenthesis, starting with this parenthesis. So this says there's an X out there. Kind of noisy. Noisy day. A little noisy here. This says there's an X out there, and X is a cat, and X is not a pet. So we're using C as a predicate constant, standing for the predicate cats, or is a cat, and we're using P as a predicate constant, standing for the predicate is a pet, and so that's how we would do those two. Let's uh, let's do some more types of these okay. sentences. How about um, let's think about the Loch Ness monster. I can do that. Known as Nessie. Nessie, okay. Okay, so someone says Nessie exists. They believe Nessie exists. Or, well, we better, to make this more appropriate, let's just say, um, let's let N stand for is a Loch Ness monster. How's okay. that? The Loch Ness monster is supposedly a sea monster that lives in a lake in Scotland, Lake Ness, and uh, sometimes named Nessie, but we'll just let capital N be the predicate, is a Loch Ness monster. Okay. This is a predicate a sea creature would have if it were a Loch Ness monster, which, which actually is, uh, there's a species that is the Loch Ness monster species. It's called a Cadborosaurus. So you've actually got a species? Yes, they've named the species. I did not know that. Cadborosaurus. If there were a Loch Ness monster, it would be a Cadborosaurus. So we're naming potential entities of this species. Yeah. It's like a prehistoric creature. I love this world. Yeah, okay. prehistoric species. And then if it's still alive, it's 
that's what Nessie would be. Okay. Uh, so, so how do we want to say there is a Loch Ness monster? Well, since you're making a claim that something actually exists in existence, something yeah. actually exists, we're going to use the existential quantifier because that's the only way of predicate logic or quantification logic that you can say something exists. Okay. So this is telling me something exists. I ask myself, what is it? That's How existing? many? How many? Well, you're, you're saying Loch Ness monster exists, so there's going to be. Loch, Loch Ness monsters exist, at least one. Mm -hmm. So there's something that exists such that it is a Loch Ness monster. So I'd have a capital N X there. And that would be, there's a thing such that it is a Loch Ness monster. Loch Ness monsters exist. I don't have to agree with this. It may right. be false, but that's how you translate it. Right. And my question was, when you say there's at least, there's a thing, how many of these are you talking about? One or more. Just one or more. One and more. you don't know how many. I don't know if it's a thousand or a billion. I don't know. Or one. Or one. So that just says there's at least one X such that X is a Loch Ness monster. So how do you how do we say so the skeptic says there is no Loch Ness monster? Well I could deny this claim. If this yeah. is what the Loch Ness monster proponent or advocate would say, I can just simply put a tilde in front of it and I would say it is false that there are Loch Ness monsters. That would be one way of doing it. So this says it's not the case. There's an X, such that X is a Loch Ness monster. That would be the way I would translate it. In other words, there is no X that's such that X is a Loch Ness monster. Well, if that says there is Loch Ness monsters, that denies it. There's not uh -huh. Loch, Loch Ness monsters. Right. So we we are not treating existence as a predicate. That's kind of interesting. We're not treating existence as a predicate. We're treating it as a quantifier. Yeah. There's a difference between a quantifier and a predicate. It's a deep philosophical issue, actually. Because in the, in the Middle Ages, there was a philosopher named Anselm who gave an argument for God's existence, where God is understood or defined as the most perfect being possible. And his argument is often understood as uh, requiring that existence be treated as a predicate rather than as a quantifier in logic. And uh, there's a lot of philosophical debate about that. Well, we got to see, we're right next to a fire station. That's the problem. <laughs> but we're moving inside on the next okay. video. Anyway, we're treating existence as the quantifier and the denial of existence as a negated quantifier, not as a predicate. But there's a deep philosophical issue involved in this. Um, how about this? Let's do one more and then we'll. Okay. How about if we say. Black cats are unlucky. All black cats are not lucky? Uh, yeah, unlucky. are not lucky. As a friendly uh, Sure. Okay. All black cats are not it's lucky. It's going to be a universal statement. I see, hear the word all. Uh -huh. so we start off with a universal quantifier. Okay. So for all X. Okay, and this statement is about black cats. Mm -hmm. Well, I can use this style of logic, predicate logic, quantification logic, to get the details of this. So I would say, for all things, if you're black and you're a cat, VX ampersand CX. Okay. It's a lot of big trucks. A lot of big trucks. So for any X, if X is black, black and, and X is a cat. So now we've actually specified that it's not just cats, but it's yeah. black cats. Yeah. You know, if all things, if you're one of these guys, you're black and you're a cat, then something's gonna be true of you. You say unlucky. If you're allowing me to think of that as not lucky, I would go tilde L X. Mm -hmm. Where L X says X is lucky. lucky. This would be this point. Tilde says L's not lucky. X yeah. is not lucky. And I, I, I probably wouldn't have just assume that. Yeah, I suppose I could have had U X mm -hmm. be unlucky. Mm -hmm. But I'm asking you, did you mean by not lucky? And you said yes. Mm -hmm. So I would say this translates more of the subtle nuances of your claim. Mm -hmm. And this would be a preferred translation. Good. Yep. And so the quantifier binds all these variables in the bracketed expression. They're all within its scope. So we think of each of these variables as a pronoun referring back to the x here. So we think of this as telling us that the sentence is about everything in the universe. Yep. And of each thing in the universe, the sentence says all of this. So of each x, it says if x is black and a cat, then x is unlucky says that of each x, so therefore every black cat in the universe is unlucky. That's how we say it in predicate logic or it's also called quantificational logic. 
Good. And so the predicate B stands for is a cat. The predicate C stands for is a cat. The predicate L, the predicate constant L stands for is lucky. And the X is the variable. And again, this is a general sentence because it doesn't have a proper name or a definite description that singles out one specific thing. So we hope this, you know, gets you into the material a little bit and inspires you to study uh, grammar and notation of quantificational logic. And to find out about Loch Ness Monsters. That's it. Thank you.